think that there are uh, real issues in, in China now, and they changed really in the last um, four years. Individuals, 70% of their money was in real estate. Real estate has gone down. Stocks have gone down. S salaries have gone down. And so, and, and as a result, they're not spending and they're concerned and they're holding money in cash. With deflation, cash is a relatively good asset class. That's kind of the household and the business sector is in that state. At the same time, you have the government sector is a problem because most of the government spending, 83% of government spending, is spent by local governments. Those local governments got their money by selling land for real estate. Okay, there are no land sales. And they borrowed a lot of money. And uh, for those that they borrowed the money don't get paid. And so the question is, how are you going to get money into the, those places to operate? It's a situation that's more challenging than Japan in 1990. Imagine a nation once heralded as the unstoppable economic powerhouse, now grappling with a financial crisis that echoes the depths of Japan's lost decade. China, the world's second largest economy, is facing a seismic shift that could reshape global markets. Ray Dalio, a veteran investor with decades of experience, has issued a stark warning mentioning that China needs a restructuring, and the stakes have never been higher. But is this just another cyclical downturn, or is China at the brink of a crisis that could send ripples across the global economy? Let's delve into the multifaceted issues that Leo highlights and explore what the future holds for China's economic landscape and global investors. Delio paints a grim picture of China's household sector, where approximately 70% of personal wealth is tied up in real estate, with real estate prices plummeting, evidenced by a 16.7% drop in property sales by floor area in the first half of 2024. The sector that once served as the backbone of China's economic boom is now its actual heel. The impact is staggering. Not only have property values declined, but the ripple effects are seen in lower consumer spending and heightened savings rates as households turn to cash, fearing further asset depreciation. Cash has become a favored asset class amidst deflation, with China's consumer price index slipping into negative territory for the first time in over two years in July 2024, registering a deflation rate of 0.3%. This deflationary pressure exacerbates the reluctance to spend, further strangling economic growth. Delio's insights align with recent data showing that retail sales growth has slowed significantly, increasing just 2.5% year-on-year in July 2024, well below market expectations. For businesses, the environment is no less dire. China's industrial sector, which was once the envy of the world, is now showing signs of strain. Factory activity has been contracting for several consecutive months, with the Purchasing Manager's Index for Manufacturing stuck below the critical 50-point mark, indicating ongoing contraction. In this deflationary environment, businesses are also holding cash rather than investing in growth, stalling any potential recovery. One of the most critical issues DeLeo highlights is the financial strain on local governments, which are responsible for 83% of China's public spending. For decades, local governments fueled their budgets through land sales, a practice that has now hit a wall due to the slumping real estate market. In the first half of 2024 alone, land sale revenues fell by nearly 20%, and many local governments are now burdened with unsustainable debt levels. According to recent estimates, China's local government debt has ballooned to over $10 trillion, a figure that exceeds the national government's official debt this has created a ticking time bomb, as these debts are often held by local government financing vehicles, which face increasing difficulty in rolling over their loans. The default risk is palpable. Several local government financing vehicles have already missed payments, and analysts warn that a broader wave of defaults could trigger a financial crisis. Delio's comparison of China's current predicament to Japan's 1990s crisis is not hyperbolic, Japan's lost decade was characterized by deflation, a banking crisis, and stagnant growth, conditions that are eerily similar to what China faces today. The key difference, however, lies in the scale and the potential global impact. China is a much larger player in the global economy than Japan was at its peak, meaning that a significant downturn in China could have far-reaching consequences worldwide. Beyond the financial metrics, 
Delia raises a fundamental question about the security of property rights in China, a concern that has profound implications for investor confidence. Under Deng Xiaoping's leadership, the mantra to get rich is glorious spurred a generation of Chinese entrepreneurs and investors. However, recent regulatory crackdowns on technology firms, education companies, and the real estate sector have shaken this confidence. China's government has been tightening its grip on various sectors, leading to a perception that property rights and the rule of law are less secure. The collapse of major real estate developers like Evergrande and Country Garden, both of which have defaulted on billions of dollars in debt, highlights the fragility of the property sector. These defaults have not only rattled domestic markets but also raised doubts among international investors about the safety of their investments in China. According to a recent report by Goldman Sachs, foreign direct investment into China fell to its lowest level in 18 years in the first half of 2024, reflecting growing concerns about political risk and the sustainability of China's economic model. Delio's cautious approach, maintaining only a small percentage of his portfolio in China, underscores the broader sentiment among global investors who are wary of overexposure to a market with rising uncertainties. Despite the economic gloom, Delio acknowledges China's continued prowess in innovation, particularly in technology. China remains a global leader in sectors like AI, 5G, and electric vehicles where government support has spurred rapid advancements. For example, China accounted for more than 50% of global electric vehicle sales in 2023, and its companies lead the world in battery technology and solar panel production. However, Delio cautions that much of this innovation is government-directed, raising questions about the sustainability of entrepreneurial freedom. Recent regulatory actions against major tech firms have sparked fears that the government is stifling private sector dynamism in favor of state-led initiatives. This tension between state control and private innovation is a crucial issue that could determine China's long-term economic trajectory. In a recent interview, Jack Ma, co-founder of Alibaba, warned that excessive government intervention could stifle innovation and drive talent away from China. This sentiment is reflected in the latest data from the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor which shows a decline in new business formation in China for the first time in over a decade. The ability of Chinese entrepreneurs to navigate this increasingly complex landscape will be pivotal in determining whether China can maintain its competitive edge in global innovation. For Galio, the question of investing in China boils down to risk management. He continues to see value in the Chinese market, citing attractive valuations amidst the broader market downturn. The Shanghai Composite Index is down over 20% from its recent highs, and many Chinese stocks are trading at valuations not seen in years. For contrary investors, this presents an opportunity to buy into a major economy at discounted prices. However, Delio is clear that investing in China should be approached with caution. He advises against allowing Chinese investments to dominate one's portfolio reflecting the heightened risks associated with the current economic and political environment. Recent data supports this conservative stance. Global fund managers have been trimming their Chinese exposure, with the latest figures showing a net outflow of over $40 billion from Chinese equities in the first half of 2024. Delio's nuanced perspective, recognizing both the potential and the pitfalls of investing in China, mirrors the broader sentiment among global investors. While the long-term growth prospects of China remain compelling, the near-term uncertainties necessitate a careful, measured approach. China's economic challenges are complex and multifaceted, ranging from deflationary pressures and local government debt crises to concerns about property rights and government intervention. Delio's call for a restructuring reflects the urgent need for China to address these issues if it hopes to regain its footing as a global economic leader. For investors, the key takeaway is clear. While China still offers significant opportunities, these must be weighed against the considerable risks. Diversification, prudent portfolio management, and a keen eye on evolving economic and political dynamics will be essential for navigating this uncertain landscape. As Delio aptly puts it, 
Investing in China today requires a fine balance, one that could define the fortunes of global investors in the years to come.